Stephen Main from the Main Report. Now, Stephen, you did go to the Macquarie Bank AGM. Raise the outlook for themselves post their satellite funds. Look, I think they were quite upbeat. They basically, you know, gloated about their incredibly strong balance sheet, 30 billion of cash, you know, almost 20 billion government guaranteed, four and a half billion of excess capital, share prices almost tripled from, from the low, and uh, they came out and they forecast that they'd make a, a first half profit of about $435 million. So they are now a genuine top 10 global investment bank. They've survived the greatest financial calamity without even declaring a loss. Sure, you know, 17 years of profit rises in a row came to an end and, and the profit went from 1.8 billion to 871. But overall, it was a record turn up from shareholders. They wanted reassurance. Uh, they got it in spades and uh, Macquarie Bank is as big and as strong as it's ever been. Albeit, many investors in many of their funds, listed and unlisted, have now dropped probably close to $10 billion from Macquarie paying stupid prices at the top of the boom to become the world's biggest infrastructure company. Now they're obviously running away from that model at, uh, at a rapid rate. How did you feel as a shareholder that Nicholas Moore, the new newish CEO, fared? Look, I think he's a, he's a very impressive performer. Um, I think he's a bit sort of Delphic and, uh, you know, I keep saying to him, Nicholas, you can at least have a picture of a banker in the annual report. You know, you've never, never had that. I asked him about Briz connections, you know, how much we've lost. He was very cagey, wouldn't give any figures. So um, he's a guy who doesn't particularly like the spotlight. He'd rather we never have AGMs. Um, and, uh, but overall, you know, I think he's, a, he's an incredibly impressive uh, banker and he's managed Macquarie extremely adeptly in basically unwinding his own model, which yes. was the listed infrastructure model, and stressing that, uh, you know, 40% of the revenues that Macquarie is making at the moment are from businesses that didn't exist five years ago. In other words, it just evolves, it's opportunistic, it evolves. All right, and so he's... He is saying essentially that we're not dependent on the satellite funds, that, that we keep evolving and that Macquarie will continue to do well, so thereby reassuring everyone? Absolutely. I mean, the, the listed and unlisted infrastructure funds are only about uh, 10 to 15 per cent of revenue now. Obviously, they were much, much more at the peak. Yes, but what's going to replace them? And as you pointed out, Macquarie them? five years ago was just an Australian securities business. Now they have a genuine global footprint in securities in Europe, they were the biggest, did the biggest number of IPOs in Hong Kong. They're getting big time into energy trading and, and, and they've got a huge team working on carbon. Their, their commodities business and treasury business is as strong as ever. They are genuinely diversified, absolutely bulletproof in terms of their uh, financial strength and uh, innovative and nimble and they'll just move on to the next opportunity. Don't forget they've taken the biggest pay cuts in history, you know, $1.8 billion reduction in total pay. Nick Moore's pay went from $27 million to $290,000. Uh, but the point about the balance sheet, the write-downs, I, I asked that, was my first question to the auditor, was there was still an extra $1 billion of write-downs that they didn't take. So they did $2.5 billion of write-downs, but if they'd taken everything down to market prices, it would have been another $1 billion. And under the Macquarie pay model, that would be another $550 million hit to bonuses at Macquarie because the staff get 55% of the bonuses. And one of the responses later on was that the Macquarie market capitalisation now is $14 billion, but the balance sheet only claims it's 10.8. So overall, across the entire Macquarie balance sheet, they are undercooking valuations. And the biggest thing they're not valuing is those management contracts of the funds. They're all in there at zero, but some of the funds themselves, the share prices, are in the books at a significant premium to the current heavily discounted prices of things like MAP and MIG. Nicholas has got 28 million in his restricted profit pool. That's yes. invested in a portfolio of every single Macquarie instrument and listed fund you can find, and it fell by 5 million for the year. Yes. So, in other words, his previous pay was overstated by $5 million, and so you've got to book that adjustment in the current year. But Steve's right, he didn't actually only get paid two ninety; He got paid <laughs> three or four, but then he lost $5 million on his old bonuses, which have been held in Macquarie stock and other listed funds that Macquarie um, runs. Uh, 